Stepney's visit to the Fat Controller's Railway was coming to an end. We shall miss you, said the Fat Controller. Then he turned his attention to all the other engines. My railway is very busy and I am pleased with you, but you need help. A diesel is all that's available. Please do your best to avoid any air uh, disturbances. What does that mean? whispered Duck. That means this diesel is difficult, snapped James. And he was. The diesel surveyed the shed. Not bad, I've seen worse. At least you're all clean, he sneered. The engines glared. It's not your fault, but your controller should scrap you and get engines like me. A fill of oil, a touch on the starter, and I'm off. No bother, no waiting. They have to fuss around you for hours before you're ready. The engines were furious. Next morning, they held an indignation meeting round the turntable. Disgraceful, mumbled Gordon. Disgusting, said James. Despicable, spluttered Henry. To say such things to us, cried Donald and Douglas. It's to teach him a lesson we'd be wanting. Now how do we do it? The chance came sooner than expected. The diesel was purring comfortably. An inspector watched the fitter making final adjustments. The wind tugged at the inspector's hat. Diesel was ready. Look at me, Duck and Stepney. Now I'll show you something. He rolled proudly towards his coaches. Then it happened. Shaking and spluttering, the diesel stopped. Meanwhile, the inspector was looking for his hat. The diesel seethed with fury as Duck and Stepney pushed him back to the shed. My hat! exclaimed the inspector. You've sucked it through your air intake. Bother your hat, said the fat controller. The heavy train's due out. You'll have to take it, Doc. Stepney, will you help, please? Thank you, sir, cried Stepney. I'd like a good long run on my last day. Engines were soon ready. Gordon will take over from halfway, so get the train there. Good luck. Don't worry, smiled Stepney. We'll get there and be early too. The cavalcade moved carefully over the rails and out to the open line. Now for a sprint, puffed Stepney. I'm ready when you are, replied Duck. Soon they were whizzing through Edwards Station. And next, they charged at Gordon's Hill beyond. They felt the drag of the heavy coaches here. It was hard work. At last, they were running smoothly along the line towards the big station. Hello, said Gordon. You're early. That's one in the headlamp for old Diesel. James says he's sick as boiler sludge and sulking in the shed. Serves him right for saying we're out of date. And Gordon chortled away. Next day, everyone came to say goodbye to Stepney. Come back and see us soon, whistled the engines. And you are always welcome on my Bluebell Railway too, replied Stepney. Then he puffed away. And what about Diesel? He'd slipped out whilst no one was looking. He said goodbye to no one but left two things behind. A rather nasty smell and a battered bowler hat. Stepney the Bluebell engine was busy talking to the other engines. It was his first visit to their railway and he was having a splendid time. You are very lucky engines, he said. Your line has got everything. It's long enough to give you a good run and you have plenty of passengers. Then you have a quarry and a mine, so you need plenty of trucks. Trucks are fun. 
I missed them on our line. Percy was surprised. All the engines thought trucks were trouble. You're welcome to take some of mine, he said, but you'd better ask driver first. The drivers agreed and the two engines set off. Thomas and Toby were speechless. Stepney took the trucks to the harbour. Then he picked up a load of empty ones and started back. Ahead was a cricket field. The game had just begun. Stepney and his driver had to wait at a signal. Good said his driver. We can watch the game. Then there was trouble. The batsman hit the ball. It flew high into the sky towards Stepney's train. Clunk went the signal. Thump went the ball into a truck. But neither driver nor fireman heard it. Stop! yelled the players. But Stepney didn't hear them. Come along, come along, he puffed to the trucks. One and only ball, cried the players. Wake up, Caroline, they said to their old car. The chase is on. Caroline coughed crossly and rolled down the road. Stepney wasn't hurrying. Caroline soon came up behind him. Toot! Toot! She wailed. The players shouted, but Stepney was still too far away for his driver and fireman to see or hear properly. They completely misunderstood. If those jokers want a race, said the driver, they can have one. Faster, Stepney, faster. Poor Caroline wasn't happy at all. She rattled along at twice her usual speed. I shouldn't be treated like this, she grumbled. This pace is too hot for my system. It'll fuse all my circuits. Suddenly, Stepney was nowhere to be seen. Hurrah, cried Caroline. That silly train has run into a hole so we can't catch it. I can go home now. But she couldn't. A driver pounded Caroline on up the steep hill and then down the other side towards the station. Stepney was already there when Caroline cluttered in. We need our ball back, cried the players and explained everything. The ball was nestled under some straw in the third truck from the van. We found it, cried a player. We're sorry, sighed the driver. Oh, you couldn't help it, replied the player. Now we must get back quickly. You'll be lucky, said the driver. Caroline looks worn out. And she was. The driver spoke to the station master and the signal man and they all agreed a plan. Soon they had rolled Caroline onto a flat truck with a brake van coupled behind. The players crowded inside and Stepney pulled the train back to the playing field. Everyone enjoyed watching the game. Even Caroline was pleased. She doesn't think trains silly now. They have their uses, she says. They can save the wear on a poor car's wheels. Thomas the tank engine puffed happily along his branch line with Annie and Clarabel. The fat controller was waiting on the platform. He looked at his watch. Well done, Thomas. You are right on time and really reliable. Thank you, sir. Whistled Thomas. Ooh, right on time and really reliable, hummed the coaches. But the big engines were not feeling cheerful at all. Where's Percy? mumbled Henry. He's supposed to fetch our coaches. We get no rest, complained James. He edged angrily onto the turntable and spoke rudely to Henry. What's the matter, Henry? There's no rain today. Stop worrying and do some work instead. 
I'm not afraid of getting wet anymore, huffed Henry. Anyway, you look silly enough to be a clown. You should be in a circus. Oh, whistle Percy, so you've heard the news. What news, grunted Gordon. About the circus. Percy, what are you talking about? The circus has arrived, explained Percy. I've been shunting special trucks. The fat controller needs your help too. The engine soon forgot to be tired and cross. Until it was time for the circus to leave. Then Gordon and Henry were cross all over again when James got to pull the train away. A little later, the fat controller returned. Come along, Henry. A tunnel is blocked down the line. You must take some workmen to investigate. Pushing trucks, pushing trucks, grumbled Henry. They stopped outside the tunnel. The workmen went inside. It was very dark and quiet but not for long. Help! shouted the workmen, and they ran out. We started to dig at the block, but it grunted and moved, one said. Rubbish, said the foreman. It's not rubbish, it's big and alive. We're not going in there again. Right, said the foreman. I'll ride in the truck and Henry shall push it out. Weesh! said Henry unhappily. He had been shut in the tunnel for being afraid of the rain, but this was worse. Something big and alive was inside. Beep! Beep! I don't want to go in. Neither do I, said his driver, but we must clear the line. Oh dear, oh dear, puffed Henry. Then there was trouble. The block was indeed alive and very strong. It began to push the train backwards. Out of the tunnel came Henry. Then the trucks. And last of all, a large cross elephant. Well, I never did, cried the foreman. The workmen gave him some cake. He drank three buckets of water and was just about to drink another when Henry let off steam. Oh! cried the elephant. Water went all over Henry. Poor Henry. The elephant and his keeper were soon reunited, but Henry was most upset. An elephant pushed me! An elephant pushed me! That night, he told the other engines all about it. Gordon and James felt sorry for Henry, but still teased him. First the rain, then an elephant. Whatever will you be afraid of next? Never mind, Henry, murmured Thomas. I think you were brave today and really reliable too. Gordon, the big engine, and Thomas, the tank engine, puffed buffer to buffer back home. It had been a busy day. First, Thomas had teased Gordon about the time that the big engine had slid into a ditch. Then Thomas fell down a mine and Gordon came to his rescue. Remember, Thomas, called Gordon grandly, united we stand, together we fall. You help me and I'll help you. I'll remember replied Thomas, but I hope the fat controller forgives us soon. Suddenly they noticed something. As the two engines whistled into the sheds, everywhere they looked they saw paint pots and painters. Bus by buffers, said Thomas. What's happening? Shh, whispered Percy. The fat controller is going to tell us now. Ladies, gentlemen and engines. I am honoured to inform you that Her Majesty the Queen herself is coming here to visit us. Now, on with the preparations. The engines wondered who would pull the royal train. I'm too old to pull important trains, said Edward sadly. I'm in disgrace, sighed Gordon gloomily. You'll choose me, of course, boasted James. 
You, snorted Henry, you can't climb hills. He will ask me to pull the train and I'll have a new coat of paint. Then the rain came. Henry's driver and fireman covered up their cab to keep dry. A painter was on the ladder above the line. Henry's smoke blew high into the air. The painter couldn't see. Both he and the paint pot fell all <clears throat> over Henry. Poor Henry. Well, you're not a pretty picture, sneered the painter. The fat controller spoke next. You look like an ice cake, Henry. That won't do for the royal train. I must make other arrangements. Gordon and Thomas were waiting for him. Please, sir. One at a time, replied the fat controller. Yes, Gordon. May Thomas have his branch line again? Hmm. I think you are both very sorry and deserve a treat. Edward will go in front to clear the line. Thomas will look after the coaches and Gordon will pull the train. The great day came. All the engines work hard bringing people to the town. Thomas sorted out their coaches in the yard. Edward steamed in. Beep! The Queen is here! Then Gordon whistled as he approached the station. Everyone knew that sound. The Queen's train glided into the station. Gordon was spotless and his brass shone brightly. The fat controller stood to attention. Welcome, Mum. The Queen thanked him for a splendid run and asked to see all the engines. Beep, beep, whistled Toby and Percy. Shh, hissed Henry and James. But Toby and Percy didn't care. Three cheers for the Queen. Beep, beep, whistled the engines. When it was time to leave, the Queen spoke specially to Thomas, who fetched her coaches. Then to Edward, and finally to Gordon, who took her away. No engines ever felt prouder than those on the Fat Controller's Railway. One evening, Thomas brought his last train to the junction. Percy was glad to see him. Are you on your way to the big station, Thomas? Yes, I am. Why? Because I'm going there too. I think something's up. Toby looked at the sky. We're not up there, down here, laughed Thomas. How can something be up when it's down? Thomas was too excited to explain. Bust my buffers, look over there. Mavers, Boko, Bill, Ben, Donald, Oliver and Douglas paraded past. Good evening, you three, whistled Donald. Aren't we all a fine sight? Very splendid indeed, admired Toby. But sorry we can't stop. The fat controller wants us all together at the station. What is this about? asked Thomas. The fat controller has a plan, answered his driver. Come on. So they followed the other engines to the big station at the end of the line. Call the fat controller. I have an important letter to read from a little girl who is five years old. Dear Thomas and all the engines, please can I meet you? My friends say they would like to meet you too. You could come to my house for tea, but my mummy says there aren't any railway tracks to my house. Can you come to the station instead? Thank you very much. It seems, continued the fat controller, 
that there are many girls and boys who would like to meet you. Therefore, we are all going to the big city far away. Hooray, hooray, the engines whistled. Target, called the fat controller. Other engines will be working here while you are away, so please show them what to do. As Annie and Clarabelle were going to the big city too, Thomas and Oliver practised with some other coaches. Thomas grew more and more excited. Too excited for his own good. I'm glad I'm a splendid engine, he puffed. The fat controller thinks I'm really useful. I had a race with Bertie once. I whooshed through the tunnel and stopped an inch from the buffers. Then, Thomas made his mistake. Just like this, he boasted. No one was hurt, but Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned to the fat controller. I'll send up the workmen, he said. But if they can't mend Thomas in time, we'll have to go to the big city without him. Poor Thomas. Eight o'clock next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on a truck and Duck had pushed them into place behind Edward. Gordon, James and Henry were waiting to lead off. They whistled impatiently. The fat controller looked at his watch. I'll wait one more minute for Thomas, then we have to go. Oh, thank goodness you're still here, panted Thomas. I hope we're not late, as it's just after eight. The guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines cheered. Look how big city, here we come. And the cavalcade puffed away. Later in the big city, all the engines were lined up in a splendid shed. The children were delighted to meet their friends. I'm glad the little girl wrote to us, whispered Thomas to Percy. Isn't it wonderful what happiness a letter can bring? Toby the tram engine has cow catchers and side plates. They help to prevent animals from getting hurt if they should stray onto the line. Daisy thought Toby's fenders were silly. You're afraid of getting hurt yourself, she flounced. I'm not, huffed Toby. You are? I've not got stupid cow catches, but I'm not frightened. I just toot and they'd all go away. But they don't, said Toby simply. They would with me. Animals always run if you toot and look them in the eye. Even bulls, even bulls, said Daisy confidently. Daisy had never met a bull, but she purred away quite unconcerned. She tooted at a farm crossing and a horse and cart halted while she went by. Poo, she said. It's easy, I just toot and they all stand aside. Poor little Toby, I'm sorry he's frightened. At the next station, a policeman was waiting. There's a bull on the line, he warned. Please persuade it to return to the farmer. Daisy was excited. Now, she thought, I'll show Toby how to manage bulls. Champion isn't really a fierce bull, but this morning he was cross. He'd strayed from his field, crashed through a fence, slithered down a slope, and now he didn't know where he was. Suddenly, he saw some grass. Now for my breakfast, he thought. Ooh, tooted Daisy. Go on, 
champion was too busy chomping to take any notice. Ooh, ooh, said Daisy again. Champion kept grazing. This is all wrong, thought Daisy. How can I look him in the eye if he won't turn around? At last, he did. Mmm, said Champion. Uh, ooh, murmured Daisy. Why doesn't he run away? Go on, Daisy, said her driver. He's harmless. Yes, said Daisy unhappily. You know he's harmless, and I know he's harmless, but does he know? Look at his horns. If I bumped into him, he might hurt me. Er, uh, then. The farmer wouldn't like that. Champion sniffed at Daisy. Oof! said Daisy. And that was that. Daisy did no more. Toby was bemused and amused to see her back in the station so soon. Bulls always run away if you toot and look them in the eye, eh, Daisy? Daisy stayed silent. Ah, well, continued Toby. We can live and learn. I'd better chase him away for you, I suppose. He clanked away to find Champion. Toby's bell rang and his whistle sounded, but Champion took no notice. Then Toby hooshed loudly. That did the trick. Toby hooshed a little more. And breakfast over, Champion chunted away to join the farmer. Daisy was feeling exhausted. She was glad when her day's work was over. Some boys were on the platform. Look, Daisy, one tease, I've got some sweets. They're called bull's eyes. I like them. Do you? Hmm, said Daisy. Keep your old bull's eyes. And she scuttled to her shed. Oliver had been to the works to be mended. Some troublesome trucks tricked him and the Great Western engine fell into the turntable well. Now, Oliver was as good as new, but he was still worried about trucks. I'd rather not use them, he puffed to himself. But the trucks sang songs, rude and loud. Scruffy, their leader, led the chorus. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever. When the yard is up, perhaps, when the grace is fully, we just push him down the well. Pop goes on dolly. Thomas, Duck and Percy were shot. Be quiet, they ordered. But they couldn't be everywhere, and everywhere they weren't, the trucks began again. Oliver's no use at all, thinks he's very clever, says that he can manage us, that's the best joke ever! At last the engines gave up. We're sorry, Oliver, they said. It's really my fault, said Oliver sadly. I shouldn't have fallen in the turntable well. Toad the brake fan felt sorry for Oliver too. Next morning he spoke to Douglas. I'm worried, Mr Douglas. This disrespect for engines, where is it going to end? Who knows, sighed Douglas. I've got a plan, Mr Douglas. May I stay here today and help Mr Oliver? We are both Great Western and must stand together. Of course, Toad, replied Douglas and puffed away. Soon Toad was explaining his plan. Goodness gracious, Toad, I don't think you should suggest such a thing to Oliver. But Oliver interrupted. No, Duck, Toad's right. It's really my fault. I must put this trouble right. I meant no disrespect, you understand. Of course not, Toad. Anyway, Driver says the same. And he's arranged it with the station master. Very well, Oliver, conceded Duck. But I must hurry. My passengers will be waiting. Good luck. So long, smiled Oliver bravely. But he felt dreadfully nervous inside. Oliver marshaled the worst trucks two by two. 
That's the way, Mr. Oliver, whispered Toad. And if you leave that scruffy to last, you'll have him behind you. Then you can bump him if he starts his nonsense. Hold back, hold back, whispered Scruffy, and passed a word to the others. The silly trucks giggled. But Oliver knew what to do. There was plenty of sand on the rails and his wheels gripped splendidly. He gave a great heave. Oh, groaned Scruffy. I don't like this. Go it, yelled Doc. Well done, boy, well done. Oh, well, Scruffy. Oh, I'm coming apart. And he did. Then there was trouble. Well, Oliver, so you don't know your own strength, is that it? No, no, sir, said Oliver nervously. The fat controller inspected Scruffy. As a thought. Rotten wood, rusty frames. Maybe if we put you back together, you'll earn yourself a better name. Nowadays, Oliver only takes the trucks when the other engines are busy. But they are always quick to warn each other. Take care with Mr. Oliver. If you play tricks on him, you'll never be the same truck again. Scruffy has learned his lesson and says, Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs>